Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Hearts of Iron 4 here today on the channel. We have episode 2 of my Millennium Dawn United States campaign. Here today, first up, we're going to try and do some defending as the Axis of Resistance and CSTO has attacked them. Unfortunately, we weren't able to go right in um, because we weren't guaranteeing their independence. But... Unfortunately, there's some military forces invading in the south, so I don't know how much longer um, they're going to last. So we're going to have to go for the 2004 NATO expansion, and we also probably should go around and guarantee independence of a lot of countries, because we can't straight up war deck them. Um, we can't get the justify war goal, so I think that's the way we're going to have to get involved into some of these wars and conflicts. So... If you like the sound of that, uh, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. Here today as well, we're going to try to continue to expand and conquer more territorial gains for us. Get more resources so we can get that, well it's now $600 billion worth of debt down. Um, we'll also just go around and guarantee countries like Australia and the such. Uh, for some reason, Italy is not in NATO. I think that they do have a tendency to drop out for whatever reason, but it's not looking good here. Yeah, unfortunately, they're just going to be taken out, I think. Ah, oh, look at this. They're really quite expanding in the south. Shit. Oh, no. They're about to be flipped or puppeted. Oh, we might even guarantee these guys as well, to be fair. The last thing I want is for them to take more territory of mine here. But we complete, uh, successfully completed Operation Freedom in the last episode. And we'll try and to continue to take more territory. Oh shit, now it's been puppeted. Oh no, they've capitulated. Oh, and they've been swung on, on over to an emerging outlook. Shit. We can justify a war goal on them. But then it's going to bring in... CSTO. Shit. Ah, oh, that sucks. That sucks so much. Alright, we'll eventually get... um Retribution on them. Eventually. But now we, we really need to expand NATO, I think. And go around and guarantee as many countries independence as we can. I'm surprised that we weren't at the start. That's annoying. So, yeah, we can't, oh no, we can declare war upon them, and the Ruskies, I don't know why, well, let's, yeah, so sometimes you can justify a war goal, well, let's do that then, because that's going to bring in them as well, yeah, if we can take these two countries out, that'll be brilliant, and then we can set up a really nice sphere of influence in the east. But yeah, we need to rapidly expand NATO. Alright, let's uh, set up some front lines. Because we want to try and get our debt down as much as possible before the, um, the GFC rears its ugly head in um, 2008. And we'll probably try and just full-on annex these territories as well. Because we want the resources. Having resources and trading them is a great way to make money in this game. Alright, we've got some more fresh recruits. And let's uh, swing them over to the east. We probably should set up our air supremacy as well. Because that's what really won the war early on. I can't recommend focusing on your air force enough. It is basically make or break in this game. Quite often we have the technology and technologically superior army and air force. Just combines that. Nice. Romania, Lithuania, Bulgaria have all joined NATO. Fantastic. Uh, we probably should guarantee the independence of the Kurds as well, to be honest. 
I think we'll leave us New Zealand. <laughs> they they could be fine. They're not going to get attacked by anyone. This might complicate things. Oh, what about um Korea? Yeah, let's uh, guarantee the South. Nice. So we brought in the um the Baltic states. Well, yeah, I don't think you have to do it by the year, but I think we'll just continue to expand it. Fuck it. Right. We've got enough political power to expand the military-industrial complex. So let's get some defense companies in. Let's get Lockheed Martin. <laughs> and, like, Raytheon as well, probably. Nice. We've unlocked the new small arms upgrade. A year early as well. The M4A1, the MK17, or the SCAR. Alright, so... Guam and... Puerto Rico are now officially U.S. states. And we've continued to furtherly expand NATO. Nice. So this is like a proper state here now. The only problem is, rath rapidly expanding can be a problem if they're not all Western Outlook. Because I think we'll just continue to go down this. I'm surprised how aggressive CSTO were to try and take them out and puppet them. So we've got to be careful. Uh, let's send some CT counter missions to reduce the worldwide threat. It does use um, army experience. So we'll get that. We also try and upgrade the Bradleys as well. Alright, so we've befriended the minor countries. We want to try and befriend some of the majors, then we'll try and make our way down to peace in Europe. We might even invite Sweden, Finland as well. There's even a bunch of guarantees here we can get. Alright, looks like there's going to be another election. And Al Gore is probably going to win it. <laughs> what a crazy turn of events. Bill Clinton... Um Lost the leadership of the Democratic pub, uh, Party. So, it does look like the Democrats are more popular at the moment. 45% compared to everyone else. Um, so, it looks like the National South look is growing. So, we'll attack them. Oh, good. We got the RNG to reduce it further. But it looks like these wars in the East have been... Beneficial to his political base in strengthening it. Al Gore. <laughs> There's not really much else we can do. We can change the flag if we want. No, I don't want to do that. But we will have to get... Vengeance on the axis of resistance. Alright, we'll see how we go. Oh no, it's dropped again here. So... I don't know if he's going to be able to form a government. He might not have enough points. Where is it? Here. Yeah, okay. So we... Can't invite any of the constitutionalists or the populists or the US military party. I could give up and let the Republicans try and form a government. No, but they've got less than us. Maybe if that gets high at one stage, we might look to switch on over. It's just if we fail to form the government, we essentially rule a minority again and then lose a chunk of political power, which we might just have to do. Then there's always a chance that Al Gore could potentially lose the leadership. But it's like, whatever. I think we'll just sort of let it go through events. Like, we've got a run of Democrats at the moment in the early 2000s. As we get a little bit later, maybe in the 2010s, it might switch over to... The Republicans, whatever. We'll just let it naturally grow. I'm not really... I don't really care about influencing either one of them. You know what I mean? We'll just let it sort of naturally occur. Brazil wants an investment. 
wants to be allowed to invest in the states, we'll accept that. But it's interesting how the constitutionalists are growing and this other outlook is growing as well. I still want to try and keep Western as best we can. Alright, battlefield support is what I want to go with. With our air force. Um, let's expand some more ties with our companies. Although that's ahead of time penalty, it's still only 190 days, so it's not that excessive. When it's like a thousand, eight hundred, it can be a little bit annoying. All right, an investment offer from the UK will accept that. Yes, we lose three hundred political power. Alright, so no, Al Gore is still in charge and the next election will be 2008 and that will be his last time that he's uh, allowed to run because that will be the end of his two terms in office. Damn, we've got some more <laughs> house uh, problems. Shit. Okay, we're only a couple days away from being able to declare war and get things going. Get some... vengeance... from what happened in the Levant. Alright. Whatever, let's just get a bunch of licensed companies in. I think that'll look cooler. Ah, oh, Sweden leaves the EU. Nice, our justification has now finished. And we'll try and kick things off. Now, in theory, everyone should come in, but you never know, they might not. Like, Turkey, you'd think, would come in, but I could be wrong. Alright. Let's declare war. The US is at war. Let's go. Yeah, so we can't call anyone in. So we're all with three factions, so it's probably only us. At the moment, it seems to be about 60% in our favor, 55 and some others. Once the Air Force starts flying and running their drills, they'll be able to give us aerial supremacy. Uh, Navy-wise as well, actually, it's probably more imperative and vital that we get them operating here in the Gulf. Because we might be able to destroy some of their tankers. Okay, so it doesn't look like they're going to call them in. Interesting. So it looks like we're only fighting here on the eastern flank before. Yeah, because if we were... Our, if we puppeted them, the territory we're now in, we might be able to attack from within their territory, but... Looks like the Turks are coming down here to help. Yeah, so it's only us, because we are in a defensive alliance rather than an offensive. We can't even get to their territory that's been tucked in here. Ugh, so we might not be able to go to war with... ...them in the west. We might have just to focus on this eastern front, because this is where the... ...war justification in Cassus Belly was. We haven't taken... Okay, we're, ta we're starting to take tiles here now, slowly. We've lost a hundred to their 20k.
Nice. Once again, need to keep losses at a minimum. Yeah. Like, we had a million pop, now we're at about 800k. You don't need crazy pop like you do in, um, vanilla Hearts of Iron. You can really rely on, like, a smaller pop if you've got the Air Force Supremacy. Nice, it's shocked up to 40k while well, we're still keeping it at about 200. I would say we're definitely winning the war and we're slowly but surely making our way towards the capital as well. We should be able to walk through the streets of Tehran very soon. Yeah, they're just not calling them in, which is interesting because we can't even move from our own lands. Maybe. Because it's who's guaranteeing them. I don't know. Only a couple more victory points here before we can conquer and claim the entire country. Although Turkey can't actually help, they're just going to move military forces into my territory by the look of it. And we've basically cut it off now in half. Oh, it does look like they're getting some volunteer forces helping them out. But I think it's going to be too little too late. Still 250. Oh my god, we've nearly managed to knock out 100k. Those losses are really significant. I think we had an easier time earlier in the last war compared to this one. Nice. So now we occupy all of the lands of Persia. Yeah, well, let's just straight up annex them. <laughs> and uh, bring in martial law. Nice. So. We've managed to hold those responsible to what happened. But it's a shame we couldn't go after their other... Faction political members, which were kind of culpable as well, these guys. Yeah, we can't justify against them. That's a shame. They didn't call them in. Cowards. Anyway, we've expanded our territory further in the east. Oh, it looks like the western outlook's coming back, even though they are a puppet of them. Damn shame. Anyway, let's try and repair the country. We don't want to leave it in rabbles and ruins. We want to use it. And we need to manage the occupied territories as well. But everything is still relatively stable. Alright. I think we continue to expand and we'll try and bring in more of these countries. Now the only problem is you do have to keep an eye on if they're non-aligned or pro-Western or what, because you can sometimes waste, essentially, the um, focus tree. It's still interesting that we can still justify against them continually. Right. So they've accepted that nice. Same with them. Same with Sweden and Finland. Perfect. Because that's what you need to do. You need to keep offensive wars to a minimum. While mostly guaranteeing independence. Of factions. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to join in our alliance or not. It'll be interesting. Alright, we might need to go down this other path, firstly. Well, I kind of want to get them in as quick as possible. Let's invite Bosnia Herzegovina. And we want to get back to economic boom. Because what happens when the housing crash occurs, you switch down to stagnant and growth, stable growth. So we're still only 2005. So it's interesting that you can't constantly have a booming economy and start like making heaps of money. 
it does try to stop you. Nice, they accepted. Um, yeah, let's go down this way. I think we choose them. Because they're not a pro uh, an established country just yet. In 2005. We probably should upgrade some of these vehicles. Eventually as well. So what's outdated? Oh, right. The ICVs. Um, it just costs civilian factories, which is kind of annoying. All this... Espionage stuff from... The La Resistance DLC. I might actually move you, potentially. Yeah, let's move you over here. Do some counter-surveillance. Uh, Bosnia wants a debt bailout. I suppose we grant it, because we've got enough money. Look at this, we're only like... 400 billion in debt now. We're really bringing it down massively. Look, you always want a little bit of debt, but the lower we can get it, the better. We'll make more money. Nice. So we've completely repaired our eastern conquered territories. And now we can build some more office buildings in the US, because that's a really good way to make money in this game. And we're making 21 billion now. Defense, healthcare, welfare is most of our expenditures. As it is the 11th of January, 2006. Okay, let's try and bring in them. Yeah, maybe in hindsight I should have gone around and just tried to guarantee independence of a lot of these factions. Ooh. Yeah, no, I'm not going to bail them out. You guys can quite clearly get fucked. Nice, and they joined. Yeah, maybe I should have expanded well rapidly. And going around and... Um, if you're playing like a democratic faction... Like, if you want to be more aggressive... In Hoi, you need to be a different style of... Political lining, I guess. We're making 43 billion. Nice. So we can increase some of the spending. Because I believe as well, when you increase healthcare, welfare, and um, hospital funding, I believe your political party gets stronger as well. Like, more of the populace like you, which is quite interesting. And when you remove it as well, if you go into debt, they get angry. <laughs> Man, this is a good mod. This is absolutely fantastic. The modern day mod basically had had so many issues when I played it five years ago, mostly due to army supply. And I think they've really fixed that because these because sometimes you wouldn't be able to take the territory like we did. We can probably nearly go with like advanced healthcare. We're getting our debt down. Like there's there's even like a really cool sort of mini game with it. I would highly recommend this mod. You do have to roll back the version. Um, but, yeah. Highly recommend the Millennium Door mod. It's uh, a lot of fun. Still trying to drop down our debt. Just the lower we can get, the better. Because if, if we can get to, like, a huge war chest in our treasury... We're going to be able to hopefully survive the global financial crisis, which is coming up in a couple of years. Which we're probably going to have to swing this stuff back. Ah, they refused membership. Fascinating. And is that because they're... Yeah, because they needed to be more Western. Okay, that's alright. A shame, though. Well, anyway, let's go with peace in Europe, because we want to try and get these other member states in.
conflict. We could go down that if we want to cast this Billy. I'm sure we'll eventually get one. Okay, let's uh, send some more training where we can as well. International recognition? No, I think that's fine. We don't want to change the flag. Uh, we probably can expand some of the resources here. It does cost house and set of positions, so then we have to combat that. Ah, Sweden joined. Hell yeah. That's fantastic. Dude, we have rapidly expanded massively. <laughs> and it's only 2006. Crikey. Well, let's invite them. Yeah, I wonder if Georgia will join. Georgia. Georgia on my mind. Maybe. I don't know. Let's even sign a non-aggression pact. The more countries we can get that border them, the better. Oh, and it switched back to Western Outlook. Oh, hilarious. So, I guess democracy um, worked its way out because they voted out the pro uh, Kremlin government, I guess. But they're still a puppet of them, which is rather annoying. But I guess as long as they're Western, that's okay. Oh, shit. I've been keeping an eye on um, the wars that have been going on, but we actually might be able to obviously not back him. Oh, okay. Well, let's get um, Hillary Clinton to, <laughs> I, I suppose, lead the uh, operations here. Fuck me. All right, yeah, so I guess we support the non-aligned rather than the emerging. Although they're nearby... Oh, we can actually war deck them. Or maybe we can attack them later. Because we can actually send forces over there. Alright, well... Once again... Let's uh, prop up some more rebels. We, it's interesting that we can't attack him, but we can attack the non-aligned, which doesn't really make much sense. Oh, we've actually expanded that we can send two military forces. Well, anyway, let's um, get a couple of these guys. So let's get... Maybe one special forces unit and then like one infantry brigade. Yeah, let's do that and we'll send Robert. Fuck it. Quickly change the color so it's easier for me to see. So we'll make it red for example. And no, I don't want to send that to you. I want to send it to him. It will also allow us to get our military experience up that we can spend. So we'll improve relations with these. We might even embargo them. Yeah, we'll do that. And we'll wait for those reinforcements to get here. Oh, Finland's probably going to join as well. Nice! We're doing really quite well. And they're properly in. <laughs> Hell yeah! That's fantastic. And we probably can send some more training missions as well. Well, unfortunately, I've uh, got to wrap things up here. Yeah, so I could buy some more tanks if we want. I was just curious to see if I could actually sell equipment on the market, but I can't. I wish I kind of could, because that would give us a lot of money. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. We're going to deal with this new war. Um, we'll see how we go. We've still got to deal with the 2008 GFC and we're slowly but surely going around guaranteeing factions and expanding. So I'm sure more future wars against major powers and factions will prop on up. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Would really much appreciate it. And uh, check out my social media links, in the, uh, links linked in the description below. So, got to say a massive thank you to this month's YouTube channel members. Massive thank you to Divine Overhand, uh, Mikey Mai, 
Eric, Chuckles, Itchy, Green Nero 1, Dimitri H, and Hectorp A. Really appreciate those guys. Alright, thanks guys for watching. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.